Why do they want to ruin your life? I was working at a diner in a small town when I met a girl named Scarlett. When she first got the job as a server, I was blown away of how beautiful she was. Why would anyone want to work in a dump like this? I guess the story was that Scarlett did not come from a great home. Her father left when she was five years old, and her mother slept around constantly, bringing strange men to the home. Scarlett would wake up and see strange men watching TV at her house, making their own food, and leaving clothes everywhere. Sometimes it got scary, as some of the men would stare at her in a scary way. She would tell her mother, but nothing was ever done. Scarlett got out of her mother's house as soon as she could, and the money she made from the diner would help pay for her apartment. I thought the story was so tough, and it made me like her even more. She was so kind, offering to help out anyone with their jobs. She cooked, cleaned, and served the customers. It was truly an amazing sight to see. As we had more shifts together, I was starting to secretly fall in love with her. She was perfect to me in every way, and I was feeling like I wanted to help her achieve her best. Not that she needed my help. I think she liked me too. But then again, she was just so kind to everyone. After a few months of working together, I heard her talking about her struggle to make the rent. She was doing everything right, not going out and just working extra shifts to get ahead. But with the inflated grocery and gas price, she was having a hard time. I pitched the idea of us moving in together, and she smiled. I moved out of my parents' house and in with Scarlett. She had a two-bedroom, so I had my own room. I did love the smell of hers, though. It smelled like lavender and peach. I was all moved in, but tried to keep my distance. I respected her and wanted to make sure she felt comfortable with me there. We continued to work our shifts at work, but we were now on the same shift and carpooling. We put our money together and were able to easily pay the bills with money left over. Everything was great. If this is what it's like to move out of your parents' house and have freedom, it was great. It was only possible though with a solid roommate. One night, on one of our off days, we were watching Netflix and having some drinks. Scarlett had always been pretty reserved, but she suddenly looked at me for longer than normal while we were sitting up on the couch. She started rubbing my leg. I'm a guy, so the wind gets me excited. She leaned over to kiss me. In the back of my mind, I did not want to ruin a good thing with my friend. But on the other hand, I was in love with her and had not let her in on my secret. She took me to the bed and we did the deed. When we were done, we looked at each other while lying in bed. We promised that we wouldn't make it weird after that. However, that's when things took a turn for the worse. So one night, we were doing the night shift and I had a table of drunk girls that just got back from going out. They were all very attractive, but I tried to keep it professional. I did make conversation, but tried to keep it related to food and drinks. Somehow though, I found myself in a long conversation with one of the beautiful women asking me about myself. The feeling of flattery made me turn a light shade of red, and that's when I saw Scarlet in the corner of my eye. She looked irritated. I took her to the side of the stock room and told her I was just trying to do my job. No matter what I said though, she looked pissed. I went back out and tried to get through the shift without doing something else. On the ride home, I apologized again, but got no response. To be honest, I didn't really think I did anything wrong, but felt the need to reassure her that I was okay to trust, given her background. We got home, and it was silent. Not knowing what to do, I just went to bed. I was woken up in the middle of the night and smelled the scent of lavender and peach. Scarlet had crawled into bed with me and was cuddling. She started kissing me and we had sex again. When I woke up, I thought everything was okay again. We were having breakfast and there was a knock at the door. It was an attractive girl looking for another girl named Beth. Probably someone else that used to live here. Scarlet suddenly got really angry and yelled at the girl that Beth doesn't live here. She slammed the door in the girl's face and then looked right at me. Who was that? 
Surprised, I said, I don't know. She said, don't lie to me. I told her, I swear, I have no idea. She said she was looking for some girl named Beth. Scarlet was accusing me of knowing that girl, like she had come to see me. This was just not possible. Scarlet and I were always together. We always had the same shifts, went shopping together, and spent time together on our off time. Scarlet was making it up, but I didn't want to tell her that. She was the most jealous person I have ever met, and it was all in her head. I was starting to get pretty scared. The last straw for me was when my sister came to see me one night during a shift. Sadly, my sister is attractive too, but not to me, obviously. That's what I heard from other people. To Scarlett, though, she might as well have been Scarlett Johansson. As my sister and I were talking, Scarlett went into freak out 1000% mood. She started yelling at me and my sister in front of the entire store, accusing me of cheating on her with a slut. I tried to explain that it was my sister, but it was no use. She started throwing chairs out of the way to get to my sister, and I stood right in her way. I told her, it's over, and I was moving out. She suddenly stopped her rampage and collapsed on the floor. She was crying uncontrollably. I left the diner with my sister and went straight to my apartment. My sister and I packed up the stuff and got out of there before Scarlet could get back. I moved back in with my parents and quit my job. My sister and I explained what happened to my parents and they were happy that we were okay. I'm not sure what happened to Scarlet, but I didn't look back. I had enough and didn't want to see her again. If you have a partner that doesn't treat you well, most of the time it isn't you. It's them. I don't like boss babes. I was working at a firm in the city with a co-worker named Trish. Trish was such a beautiful and sweet woman. A true team player, always looking out for everyone. That is, until she got a promotion and became a completely different person. Trish had always been pretty modest and professional. She dressed very business conservative and was always focused on the job. She always took time to ask me about my weekend and make other small talk. Her hard work over the years had paid off and she was promoted to a leading position in the company and now was my direct supervisor. I was thrilled and thought she was a great choice and excited to work for her. We had worked together well for years. We helped each other accomplish the various tasks the boss would throw at us. It was never a problem because we had great professional chemistry together and were very efficient. She did get the promotion though and not me, but that was okay. My time would come and I didn't mind. She was a good person and the best choice for the company. As time went on though, her demeanor towards me changed. She was like a toxic male, but in female form. She would grab my muscles and tell me how strong I looked. I did like that because I made it a priority to stay in good shape, but it was different hearing it from her. She would caress my butt and tell me my slacks fit well. I kind of like that too, but it is weird. She was completely different for some reason and was really into me for some reason. She suddenly started wearing her business suit top and her buttons unbuttoned, showing her cleavage. I'm not going to lie, it was pretty nice to see. I had no idea that was under there this whole time. I was starting to feel a way about her, but I had to keep it professional. I always liked women that were in charge. I liked the fact that they knew what they wanted and had it all figured out, but I learned that I didn't like it when I was starting to get bossed around. I was late one day, and Trish called me into her office. She closed the door behind me and closed the blinds. She scolded me for being late, and I agreed not to do it again. She was touching herself in a breast area, and I did notice. It's kind of weird. I was just trying not to drool, and kept staring forward. She apologized for the tough talk, and told me she needed me to work late to make up for it. I agreed, and went back to work. That day, everyone left at four as usual, but I stayed behind. I was in detention, and Trish was my teacher. Once everyone was gone, I asked her what she needed me to do, and she said, 
me. She took her clothes off, and I was unsure what to do. She told me that my life would be good here if I satisfied her. So I did. It was my pleasure. After that, I would work late very often. We would wait for everyone to leave. She would disrobe, and so would I. I was having a good time. Sure, it was unethical as hell, but it was fun all the same. It was when another coworker named Samantha started taking interest in me that we had a problem. Sam was much younger than Trish, and it really pissed Trish off. She had much tighter body and wore more provocative clothing, although still within company regulations. Samantha would stop by my desk daily and chat me up. It was fun but would be shut down by the boss lady, Trish. At our daily office meetings, Trish tried to discourage fraternization, as in her words, it affected good order and discipline. Samantha slipped me her number one day, and Trish did not notice. As time went on, I worked late, less, and hung out with Samantha more. The problem with Trish is that I felt like she was looking down on me, and wanted to have this power authority over me. Samantha wasn't like that at all. News flash to the women out there. Guys don't actually like bossy women. Maybe in short bursts, but not all the time. Sam and I were having dinner in the city one night. We had elected to have a table outside by the sidewalk, but that was a big mistake. Trish spotted us and stopped at our table. Oh, look what we have here, Trish said. I knew I was busted but I felt bad for getting Sam into the situation. Trish had said no fraternization, but Sam came back immediately with, that's not in the company policy, and you know it. Trish looked visibly upset, and her eyes watered. She walked away, and that was it. I looked at Sam, and she told me that Trish can't just make up rules. The power was just going to her head, and Sam wasn't going to put up with that. That's when I started to fall in love with Sam. I know what you're thinking. I'm such a terrible person. I didn't want to lose my job or cause friction, so I went along with Trish. But now that there was another option, I was losing interest in a boss that wanted to use me for her pleasure. I got home that night and got ready for bed. There was a knock at the door. I answered the door and took a knife immediately to the chest. The person that stabbed me wore all black and a black mask. After stabbing me, they ran away just as quickly as they showed up. I got stabbed, but I was okay enough to call an ambulance. I was taken to the hospital. At the hospital, the police showed up and questioned me. I told them what happened. They said there was nothing they could do because there was no evidence at all. They just told me to be careful and not answer the door. They weren't able to do much about it. They told me there was an uptick in violent crimes in that area. But the DA wasn't prosecuting people like they did in the past, so I would just have to protect myself. Naturally, I was late to work the next day, since I was at the hospital. And Trish refused to let me have the day off. When I showed up late, Trish had called me into her office. She told me I had to make up for being late. I had to work late and scolded me for not wanting to work late recently like I had in the past. I told her I didn't want to work late anymore with her, and she snapped. He started screaming at me. The whole office had heard it through the paper-thin walls. When Trish threw a chair through the glass, Sam called 911. The cops came and tried to calm Trish down. They were eventually able to get her calm, but they did not know it was but they didn't know what was really going on. Management got involved and sent Trish home, and questioned all of us. When they got to me, they asked me some very specific questions about working late. I got scared and confessed everything. They admitted that they already knew what was going on. After Trish had gone crazy, and were disgusted that two of their employees were doing this. In addition, they noticed something else. The night of my stabbing, they saw Trish masking up in an all-black outfit right before she paid me a visit. They also caught her returning to her office with a bloody knife. 
The police checked her office and found the knife with some blood on it. They tested the blood with mine, and there was a match. Trish was caught, and the police picked her up at her house. She confessed to everything. I know I wasn't innocent in this story, but I didn't try to kill anyone either. But after that, I steered clear of boss babes. They let the power go to their head, and they're just as bad as their male counterparts. I like the idea of a trad wife, a traditional wife that cooks and cleans, that takes care of you. But I think I messed up somehow. I was dating a girl named Yuki. She was from Japan and had been living in the States since college where we met as friends. Now that college was over, we both elected to stay in our college city for work. We had met again recently and hit it off. I had thought in college that she was the most gorgeous woman I had ever met, but I figured she was out of my league. I guess now that I was making a lot of money, I would be under consideration now. We had been dating a while and it was perfect. She was always there for me, and I loved the attention from her. I decided that I wanted her to move in with me. However, that's where things took a turn for the worse. She would cook and clean. I would try to do the dishes or vacuum, and she wouldn't allow me. I thought it wasn't fair to her because we were both working, but for some reason, she didn't want to hear it. It was great at first, but soon it became a problem. She would not hang out with me, but would continuously work. She would have dinner ready for me when I got home, and would call me as soon as it was four. She knew when I got off, and would call me right on time, every single time. She would open the door for me when I pulled in the driveway as well. When we were done eating dinner, she would do the dishes and clean the kitchen. She would rub my feet and listen to how my day was. I asked about hers, but she kept it short. I wanted to know more about her, but all she wanted to do was talk about me more. She would then make me a bath and invite me in. She would wash my body and then take care of my needs. We would then go to the freshly made bed, and she would take care of my needs once again. I don't know what I did to get so lucky, but I've hit the jackpot. The routine was happening for a while, and life was good. I just wish there was more I could have done for her, but she refused every advance I ever made to do things for her. There wasn't a problem, until there was. I got a call from an old friend of mine one day. He was in town and wanted to have some drinks. When I told Yuki my friend was in town, she sounded disappointed that we couldn't do our usual routine, which I loved. I told her I couldn't just blow my friend off, and I invited her to come with us. She declined though. I hung out with my friend for a while and got back home around 10. Yuki was in bed already. When I got home, Yuki wasn't around. I checked the bedroom, and she was already in bed. I reached over to give her a hug and a kiss, but she wouldn't look at me. Was it really such a big deal that I went out with my friend? She was so good to me, but am I supposed to just tell my friend I can't see him? Or am I just never supposed to go out? We had breakfast the next day, and things seemed fine. Over the next few weeks, though, I did notice her grip on my everyday life was getting tighter. She would complain when I got home late because of traffic. That's not something I can control. If I checked something on my phone and she was around, she would get visibly upset at me. If I went to the bathroom, as I had to, you know, go poop, she would knock on the door a few times to see if I was almost done. All the attention I was getting was nice at first, except for the bathroom, obviously. But this was getting bothersome. One day, my boss forced me to stay late. Yuki was not happy. She yelled at me in Japanese and hung up. She never yelled at me. I didn't really know what to do, so I just went back to work. One day, my boss forced me to stay late. I was still at work and I told Yuki. She was not happy. She yelled at me in Japanese on the phone and hung up. 
I really didn't know what to do, so I just went back to work. When I got home, there was food waiting for me at the table, but no Yuki. I sat down to eat. When I tasted the first bite, though, something was wrong with the food. It had a chemical taste. I spit it out and grew concerned. I went to find Yuki to tell her about the food. Maybe there was some kind of mistake. She was lying in the bed. I gently shook her, and there was no response. I shook her more aggressively a second time, and still no response. I turned her over and saw her eyes rolled in the back of her head. She was dead. There was a note beside the bed. She had confessed to having obsessive feelings about me that she couldn't control and decided to end it for both of us. She said she didn't want me with anyone else. The police came and confirmed what I had feared. The food at the table was poisoned. A healthy relationship requires give and take from both parties. If there's contributions only from one side, there could eventually be a bigger problem. Hey, Spooky Sooner here. Uh, I just want to say thanks for everybody. We're up to 284 subscribers now, so that's pretty awesome. The next stories coming up are some Japanese urban legends, so uh, keep an eye out for that. And I just wanted to welcome some of the new subscribers that I got. So, The Lion Queen, Small One, Hocus Music, Goku 2019, Luna Chick, Swagda, Nikki Nunu Dolby, Brian Hara, 850 Big Boy, Caroline Brown, Bridget Austin, Anthony Tony Backup, Shannon Sabados, Fan 46, Mustang Girl, James Winter, Shane Bowen, Rachel Castro, Alan Geary, The Truth Speaker, Claire Kirtan, Robert De Anda, Ashagath, Christian Cofield, Carolyn McCarroll, Fla Magic 0101, Mark Clark, Maleficent 49, Sheena Dever, Lily Clemens, John Whitaker 545, Country Girl Medusa, Serena Rafa, Taylor Bass, Jasomas Prime, Eugene Justice, Chaz White, Abdu Hippo, Kristen Dondreno, Junior Rebus, Fabian aka Mello, Wicked Witch 18, In Money, Daniel G, Nicola Gatford, Amela Stelmach, Jaguar Brout, Funny Friendship, Max Peterson, Kalan Gesgre, and Shanna Hale. Welcome, everybody. If you have requests, please send them to my email at spookysooner7964 at gmail.com and stay spooky. Somehow, though, I find my. I found. The feeling of flattery made me turn her light. She, she slammed the door. In the, she slammed the. She, she, uh, to Scarlet Joe, to Scarlet Joe, to Scarlet though, it was late one day and Trish called me into her office. She closed the door behind me and closed the blinds. Oh wait, hold on. Rewind. After Trish went quite crazy. Uh, after, after Trish went after Trish crank 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 
Oh, man. After Trish went crazy, she said she did not want to... She said she did not want me... Uh, 